Hi. Can you hear me well? Suzanne Gillian on board. I like that. I like that. Makes me think of Noah Zack. I'm on. <coughs> mm -hmm. Jocelyn tuned in. Can you hear me? Okay. Could someone confirm if the sound is okay? <coughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, somebody had their pump on and, you know, was just asking the Lord to turn it off, you know. Um, and he's turned it off. I bless the Lord. All right. So you can hear me. God bless you guys as you come on. Oh, the Lord strengthen you. The Lord continue to shine his face upon you. The Lord continue to be good to you. May the Lord remember your giving to him and your showing up for this nation and this very, very important fight for the soul of the nation of Kenya, for the destiny of this nation. May the Lord remember you. May the Lord remember you. You know, um, an angel of the Lord said to Cornelius that, um, I think it was Cornelius, sorry, I did, I didn't remember to check it but it's in Acts, I believe it is Cornelius, and um, said that uh, um, his works had come before the Lord as a memorial, okay? His works had come before the Lord as a memorial, which tells us that when we do things for God, when we show up for God, then whatever we do is written. Actually, the Lord talks about the book of remembrance, and um, the, the, it is written, and um, our works come before God as a memorial. Hallelujah. So God bless you. May the Lord show up for you. May the Lord astound you. May the Lord overwhelm you with his love and his mercy. May the goodness of the Lord and his love for you unfold to you, not just to you, but to many, many generations to come. I declare it, even in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father King of glory, I bless you for your children. Lord God, you know each and every one who has shown up, Lord God. Whoever has been praying from a long time ago, as well as the one who just got on board, oh God. In your kingdom, it does not matter. You don't check how long. You don't check, oh Lord Jehovah God, and give according to how long, King of glory. You just note the obedience, my Father, my King. So behold your children, Lord Jehovah. Behold your congregation, O oh Lord Jehovah, King of glory. The Israelite children, you said to them, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow I'll do a wonderful thing. But when you came, O oh God, they were afraid. Lord, we are not afraid because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We are not going to be speaking and saying, you go here from God and then come back and tell us. Lord, we are hungry. Lord, we are desperate. Nothing else will satisfy. Only you can do, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. If you're hungry for God and you're looking forward to his glory and all you want is revival and this is not for you about elections or politics, well some people may not get it. But if you are hungry for the Lord then the Lord will get it. The Lord will get it and another one who's hungry for God will get it. But somebody who is not pregnant is not going to understand your labor. Somebody who's not uh, desperate and has not been waiting for the Lord for a baby will not understand your joy as you feel the labor pains because the Lord has put a seed in you and it's time to birth and you can finally see this baby. No one can understand. No one could understand Hannah at all. They thought she was drunk. But when the Lord spoke through the priest of God and said you're no longer barren go and it is well with you. The word of God said that Hannah sang a song. Hannah stopped uh, crying. Hannah wiped away her tears. Hannah stopped fasting and she rejoiced in the Lord. Even her own husband, who was the father of this baby-to-be, could not understand it. Just because it, it, it gave preferential treatment to Hannah, he thought he was enough. But when you're longing for God, nothing else will do. Only God will do. And no one else can get it unless they are also equally hungry for God. So um, Elkanah asked Hannah, why are you so solemn? Why is your soul so downcast? Am I not more important to you than a thousand sons? And Hannah could not explain it because um, Elkanah was not desirable 
desirous of that child. For him he was satisfied. He had Peninas babies. But for those that are hungry, for the Hannah's whose spiritual womb is cannot be consoled apart from the Lord puts a seed in there until the birthing comes through, through revival and an outpour of God. You're crying for more of God. You can get it, but somebody else will not get it. So don't worry, okay? Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Don't be anxious. Don't panic. You know God. You know God. You've been waiting upon him. You know him. And maybe you don't know him as much as you'd like to know him. And not, not, not any one of us really knows him the way we should know him. But day by day, day by day, Ooh, the more I know him, the more I want to know him. The more I know him, the more I fall in love with him. The more I know him, the more of him that I want. The more I know him, the more I realize that I have very little of him. And I need more, more, more of him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, um, prophecy, I have said this before because it's written in 1 Corinthians. Prophecy is not for the unbeliever prophecy is for the church okay prophecy is for the church the bible says that tongues are for the unbeliever because they are a surprising thing but prophecy is for the church prophecy is a looking ahead through the eyes of god seeing what god wants to do and then speaking as a prophet in the land and then the lord acts Let's go to Acts, uh, Amos, sorry, Amos. And so if you're not born again and all this doesn't make sense and it's really, um, you know, crazy and ridiculous and all that, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Because prophecy is not for the unbeliever. So let's go to Amos chapter 3 from verse 7, actually verse 7 and 8, okay? Amos chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. Surely the Lord God does nothing. The Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets, okay? So I've seen some people say, oh, you know, no one knows the mind of God. Whew, that is false doctrine. It tells me here in the word of God that God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Jesus also said, I no longer call you slaves, but I call you, in fact, another version says servants, I call you friends because a master does not reveal to his servants what it is that he is doing. However, everything that my father is doing, I have revealed to you. And therefore, I call you friends. The Bible also tells us in John chapter 16 that one of the roles of the Spirit of God is to reveal to us what is going on in heaven, okay? So I think, you know, one of the things that really confounds me is how confident those who are ignorant about the move of God and about the things of God, how confident they are to speak. But what also amazes me all the more is how the Holy Spirit promptly speaks from his word and says, this is what is written in my word. And whenever you answer people using the word of God, a lot of times, silence. That's why Jesus answered Lucifer with, it is written. Know the word of God. Read the Bible so that that way you can be able to test the things of God. The word of God searches all things. The things of God. The word of God is Christ. John chapter 1 in verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was, wait for it, the word was God. All right? And Jesus became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So can you go and check your Bible before you try to bring the flesh in here, trying to call the move of God, the move of the devil, and align yourself to be used by the enemy? You know, sometimes I tend to 
you think that some people, even if God came down with an ID and a photo and it was written God and you know heavens opened up and there was a declaration, this is God and it did happen before by the way. Remember right next to the river where John the Baptist was baptizing, God did do that and he spoke and he said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. You know, for the longest time I wondered, why didn't they hear? You know, what is that about? Was it blindness? What was it? And then you read in the Bible that they said that it sounded like a roar. Mm. If you're not walking with God, if you don't spend time with God, when God speaks, it will sound like a roar. It will sound like a roar, like a trembling. And all you'll be able to say is, what was that? That was a lion from Masaimara, you know, and speak confidently. And you know, the Bible does talk about shaming because one person said, God's going to shame you. God's going to shame you, you know. And I was like, where does it say in the Bible that God shames people? It doesn't even talk about God shaming the devil, by the way. It talks about making a public spectacle of him. It talks about locking him up. And by the way, the devil is locked up in Revelation 20 by one angel. One 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 angel yeah and in isaiah um it says that uh you know how you have fallen old lucifer son of the morning and um you know it, it, it talks about how people will look at him and be like is this the one who disturbed us is this the one who gave us grief is this the one who troubled the nations and shook them up and everything read your bible guys it's really really exciting you know um so that that way you're also able to check things and confirm things amen uh, Lois Mutea, yes, we are praying for Mrs. Kalonzo. We've been praying for her for quite a while, actually. Um, yeah, we've been praying for her for quite a while. The Lord has spoken a lot about that. Um, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I cannot speak. I don't have the permission to speak about that, okay? So, really, um, oh, yeah, I was still talking about um, Amos chapter 3, verse 7. So, surely okay the lord god does nothing except to reveal his secrets to his servants the prophets okay he does nothing 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 he must reveal every single time okay and then verse 8 it says a lion has roared okay who will not fear now wait for it the lord god has spoken who can but prophesy you know, I began to prophesy a lot um, and just move and post and post and post. And anytime you see a lot of post things, please note the spirit of God is moving. The Lord is speaking and who can but prophesy. You'll find that I have spells when I'm pretty quiet, by the way. If the Lord is not speaking, you will find me pretty quiet or maybe I'm just in prayer or whatever it is. And you know, some days, by the way, I go and I'm like, God, what would you like me to say? I'm waiting upon the Lord and I'm like, God, they cannot go by that I have not spoken. I do need to say something, Lord God, to your children. There are some who look at this, um, you know, uh, post, Lord God, as your word. So God, what do I say? What do I say? I wait upon God. And then a word drops. Then I speak one. But there are days when God speaks heavily and in this season, he's speaking heavily. And the word of God asks, who can but prophesy when God speaks? All right. So I've been asked, you know, unite the people. Um, you're speaking divisive politics and other things. I'm just trying to sort of clear the air, you know, um, as we get on. But then we are not justifying anything, you know, when God gives prophecy, he's not looking for agreement. He's not looking for approval. He's not looking for this, you know, the kind of little finger that has been whatever that, oh, oh yeah, you participated, you're in. Mm -mm, mm -mm. He's God. He's God. He's Jehovah. Do not confuse God with man. I think a lot of people are so used to human beings that they actually think that God is a man. That God is a man. One of the things we expect is God is fair. God is not fair. God is not fair. Nowhere does it say that God is fair. Nowhere also does it say that God is nice. Okay? But God is holy. He's not ni nice. I think that's not one of the things that's used. But he is holy. Jesus even said when they called him good teacher, he said no one is good. Okay? Alright? But holy he is. Alright? Then um, the other thing is, oh you know, be fair, be nice. Won't you unite us and all that. Not my job to unite people. Okay? So um, it's not my job. And also by the way, Jesus says according to his word, he says, I, I came to bring a sword. Mm, I came to bring a sword. What does a sword do? Yeah, 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 it cuts, it chops, 
And let me tell you, you need to watch that word about being set apart. Because if you're not set apart, when you're set apart, that is the unity, okay? We are united to the Holy Spirit. We cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We walk under the Holy Spirit and under the move of the Holy Spirit. We bow before God in whichever season, in whichever time, okay? So, it's good to be united because the Word of God talks about, in Psalms, talks about uh, you know, that, that, that where there is unity, the Lord commands a blessing. It's a good thing to be united. But the enemy is always trying to bring division. But at the same time, prophecy has never been known to bring uh, unity. And because at the end of the day, especially if um, you're not looking for the word of God, if uh, you're not looking to hear from God, then there will be division. Because, you know, you're trying to ask us to, um, you know, to, what was it that I just posted in Isaiah? Oh, Father, remind me. Um, in Isaiah, we just posted it not too long ago. That, uh, you know, people are asking, you know, don't, don't, don't tell us the truth. It's actually there in Isaiah. Don't tell us the truth. Tell us lies, okay? Don't tell us the truth. Tell us lies. And then it also says, you know, that they spoke to the prophets. So they told us, yeah, stop seeing the visions, you know, and stop telling us the truth. Tell us lies. Hmm. One day, I will stand before my king, the Lord of Lords. Yahweh is his name. So let me tell you something. I'm more afraid of him than of pleasing human beings. My job as a prophet in the land and as an apostle and a priest in the land is not to attend to itchy ears is not to baby anybody, is not to share and to, there is a place for that, okay? There's a place for that. But when we are prophesying, we speak the will of God. And in a time of war, we prophesy as soldiers of the Lord. And there's no soldier who should say, oh, please, please, oh, please, please, just move a little bit. The enemy is pointing a gun at you, but you're being nice. Oh, we shit. We shit. Don't I shoot you? We shit. You'll be shot. You will be shot. Okay? So go and read about the battle of Mount Carmel. Go and read about all the battles. King David is a wonderful study. Okay? His hands were so bloodied that he could not build the temple of the Lord. Okay? As much as God said, you're a man after my heart. But then he said, your hands are bloodied, so you cannot build my temple. So war is not nice. War is not sweet. War is not wishy, and there's no time for, oh, baby, baby, mm, mm, mm. It's, it's not there. So there's a season for that, and there are many videos that have that, and there are many men and women of God who their calling is purely to carry the little children of the Lord tenderly and hold them, and that's the anointing that God has given them and put upon them. But in this season of war, in this season of spiritual warfare, there is no mincing of words. I've repeated this before, that words are power, okay? So when you speak, you prophesy to the dry bones. When you speak, you speak life. When you speak, the Lord says, speak, and you speak, okay? And you declare. So just to get that out of the way. So we'll not be um, shaking things, twisting things a little bit, you know, and doing stuff and all that. We will not, okay? We will not. We'll not be sugarcoating. I, I like to say that, you know, we do not sugarcoat the, the gospel because we are not a bakery, all right? So, very quickly, it's getting dark. Um, the word that the Lord has given me this evening is not about elections, you know, that God has done, he's finished, it's, you know, we're still birthing and all that, but you know, we've talked a lot about that. So right now, that's not what I want to talk about. And it's all what God has put on my heart. So right now, what the Lord has put on my heart is about the day of the Lord, okay? The day of the Lord. So um, when I went to vote this morning, the Lord spoke to me in a very heavy way. So I went to the polling station. They checked for my names and everything. They were able to find them. At least my fingers were working. Sometimes my fingers refused to work. But by the way, incidentally, during elections, my fingers always seemed to work. So they worked and they were able to find it. I love the picture that they have of me, beautiful picture. Then, today there was a register. I don't remember this register before, but there was a register with all these photos and names and details and everything. So I went over there. 
all of a sudden, sorry, um, I was looking for my ID and I couldn't find it. And for like two, three seconds, I'm like, Father, in the name of Jesus, I wrote, you know, then I removed the whatever. The other news. Sorry, somebody's just trying. Amazing. Just when we have a broadcast. Okay. So sorry about that. Just a bit of disruption there. So when I move now, to, oh gosh, just give me a sec, guys. I need to. Yeah. So. Oh, it's still on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we still on, guys? Yeah, the network was breaking a little bit. Somebody was trying to give me a call. I'm using my phone, so somebody was trying to give me a call. I forgot to transfer my call, so that's what was interfering. Are we are we on? All right. Thank you, Warimu, for confirming that we are on. Hallelujah. So um, uh, so we are going through that process. Can't find my ID for like two, three seconds. I'm like, oh, you know. Then, you know, I find it. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. You know, as in by the way, it's speak of the step by step praising the lord eh? even for the things that we take to be kawa kawaida things eh? like thank you jesus thank you jesus for my idea have my id thank you jesus you know then um moved to the register and when i got to the register they um couldn't um first they couldn't find my name so i was also like oh there's a register that's interesting you know so looking 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 um and then um uh, they just like for what felt like forever they couldn't find my name then i had the holy spirit speak and he told me this is how it's going to be on that day and i was like whoa you know i actually had to say to that guy i said hiya even your mingune kutakuwa even your kutakuwa your siku this is how it will be as in when you know that song we like singing when the road is called up your and normally we'll sing it where at funerals yeah and by the way at funerals you're not supposed to be caught up in the person who passed think about your own death if it was you who was lying in that casket where would you go and so um you know um i, I told the guy man this is how it's gonna be in heaven eh? you know i'm born again i'm a pastor but i was like whoa i was actually quite scared and I began to ask the Holy Spirit, prepare me, prepare me, prepare me for that day. And by the way, it's like pretty much the, 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 the room that I was in. Everybody was like, whoa, okay. And then, um, you know, um, finally they were able to find my name. And then, you know, so, so, so the question that the Lord um, gave me to ask you today is, <laughs> if Jesus was to come back today, you know the way the day has been? Would you make it to heaven? Would you make it to heaven? Today, have you been standing with God? Today, have you been walking with God? Today, have you been agreeing with God? Or were you disobedient today? You see, um, in a situation where things don't work out the way we expect them to work out, that's when the true character within us is tested. In the day that things are good, we take time in the presence of God to prepare, to stock up the word of God, to pray for the day of trouble, so that when trial comes, when difficulty comes, our attitude before God may be found right and not in sin. And guess what? If today you are found disobeying, if today you are found arising against the will of God and the power of God and what God is doing, if today you are found bitter or angry, if today you are found on the wrong side, you know, in the offside, it's called offside, yeah? If today you are found there, you would have missed heaven. And why would we miss heaven? Because of an election? Really? The Bible tells us to store for ourselves wealth in places where moth and rust cannot destroy. You know, when you're so vested in some things, like, for example, a candidate or your tribe or thinking that God will do justice from whatever it is that you think, then your treasures are here on earth. But if at all your treasures are in heaven, he speaks and he says, yes, Master. He declares and he says, yes, Lord. He declares and you say, God, I don't necessarily agree, but I obey you because your treasure is in heaven and God is your treasure. So, 
Um, the other thing that happened is, as I, 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 this afternoon, the Lord um, told me, so a lot of things have happened today. It's been a very, very powerful day for me. The glory of God is everywhere. And I feel so sad that some people cannot see it because they are so caught up in tribalism. They are so caught up in logic. They are so caught up in earthly wisdom. They are so caught up in carnality. They are so caught up in religiosity that they can not seek the Lord's face. If an election affects you this way, what happens if you lose a loved one through a sudden death that you think was unfair and maybe even prayed and you felt God didn't come through? We need to learn to love God about the things of this world because trial will come. Issues will come. Let your relationship with God be stronger than your relationship with the things of this world. So yourself treasures in heaven and seek after the Lord's will at all times. Otherwise, you will miss heaven. You will miss heaven. You know, I'm amazed that, um, you know, I've been trending uh, for a few days on a page. It amazes me that somebody thinks I'm that important to, you know, give me mileage for like all those days on their page and then when they finish, they start another post and all that. You know, um, in media, one of the rules is that um, if people are talking about you, you're relevant, okay? So clearly, um, I'm relevant, but the goodness is it's not me, really. It's Christ. It's Christ in me. I mean, I'm completely relevant. Until I began to serve God and seek after him, I was really nothing, no one. Um, so really, it's the anointing that is causing attraction. And people think that, you know, pulling things down and, you know, talking badly and mocking and everything. But here's the thing. You find amongst the posts, somebody writing, I'm born again. Really? You're born again, but you speak against the church? You're born again, but you speak against men and women of God? Whether you know them or not, have you even sought God? Ha! Huh. Not everyone who calls God Lord, Lord, is making it to heaven. The kingdom of God is not divided. A kingdom that is divided cannot stand the words of Jesus. They called him Beelzebub. A number of people that he had held attacked him. And they nailed him to the cross. We nailed him to the cross. Our sin nailed him to the cross. Oh, may you not miss your visitation because you're so caught up in religion. You're so caught up in how God should come. You have a a, a, a to-do list for God. You have a how-to list for God. Some even say, that's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. Oh, really? And then we find it in the Word. So if that's not Jesus, why is he speaking within the Word of God? May God help us. I was talking about shame and I'm being reminded by the Holy Spirit. The only cases of shame that we find in the Bible is that God shames the wise and he shames the strong yeah okay so you and your logic and all those things you will miss your visitation because you're so caught up in being in an assembly of heathens coming across like the hero as you stone the servants of god but still here's the thing and the good news Saul, so, you know as you see the attack on stephen one of the things you see it's getting dark oh one of the things you see on the attack of Stephen after they stoned him, it actually says, and Saul was there amongst them. Yeah. At one point in uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe it is, I find uh, Paul very emotional. Paul says, I've done some nasty things, I'm paraphrasing. And he says, I'm shocked that God would choose me. But he did. And here's the thing about all of us. Our lives have been so dirty. Our sin has been so bad. And yet, God still chooses us. Because that's how God works. In a way that will look foolish to men. Because at the end of the day, when you know that you have no business being chosen by God, when you know that there's no way that this can be you and it's purely God, you will bow and you will give the Lord glory. So, if it gets really dark, I'm going to have to cut off and then just set up the lighting and then continue, you know, because I'm just, the Lord really wants to minister to people, especially the sick, okay? Um, 
So the other thing that happened as I prayed, um, you know, God is just so amazing. And you know, there's a way that God speaks to us. There's a way that God ministers to us. And you look and you're like, your God, really? Start with the fact that the Holy Spirit is our helper. How is God our helper? How? How does God help us? You know, the humility of God amazes me. And so, you know, um, I, I, you know I'm seated um, uh, and, you know, I'm busy, busy, busy serving the Lord, doing for the Lord, posting for the Lord, speaking for the Lord. Then I hear the Holy Spirit say, would you come into my presence? I've missed you. And I'm like, ah. So he tells me, come. So I get this nice camp chair, you know, that we only use when we're going for, you know, when we go camping as a family, my nice big family that the Lord has blessed me with. Just one of the most amazing things God has done for me that I never thought I'd have. But yeah, this is one of our camping chairs. And the Lord says, get the camping chair. And he says, sit on it. And I love to kneel in the presence of God. And God says, don't kneel, you're tired. You've been kneeling a lot. Just sit. He says, put your feet up. Then he says, now. Just enjoy my presence. Oh. oh, if only people would get to know how wonderful God is. He's so amazing. He invites us and says, come and soak. Actually, the Bible talks about in Isaiah, come even if you don't have money. Come and drink without silver, without gold. Oh, yes. The heathen cannot get it. How can that be free? How can that be free? What are you talking about? God said he messes you. Really? Oh, yeah. He's the lover of our souls. He takes us away, and in that place, he ministers to us. When Jesus had been tried by the enemy, and he had overcome, we see a wonderful scenario where the angels of the Lord are released, and they come and they minister to him. They minister to him. And God is just wonderful like that. Now, <laughs> as I was fellowshipping with the Lord, as I was uh, soaking in the Lord, as I was enjoying his wonderful presence in which everything fades away, the things of the world grow strangely dim. As I was soaking in his wonderful goodness, his love, his mercy, his, oh, God is so wonderful. May you never miss that. May you never get into heaven, having been so religious, but yes, born again, and then get in there and be shocked at who God is. Right here on earth, we begin to enjoy his character. We begin to enjoy the atmosphere of heaven. When we pray, we begin to enjoy the atmosphere of heaven. And when we get to heaven, it will just be a level higher, but it will be something we have experienced, not something strange and shocking. Oh, children of God, that you would put aside your religious garments, that you would put aside your wisdom, that you would put aside what you think and go and ask God, is this you? If it is you, I don't want to miss it. And the word of God says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that you will not miss your time of visitation. Oh, kindare kasoro bozante rebo. May we not miss our time of visitation. The Lord is moving heavily. The Lord is moving powerfully. So as I'm in the presence of God, one thing I see is a golden thing that looked you know, a golden thing. It looked like a belt. It looked like, I can't explain it, but it was golden. And it was around a neck. And I'm asking God, is this you? Is it the enemy? What are you saying, God? What are you saying exactly? I like to ask the Lord so that I know whether to fight against it as they ask, are you for us or against us? Okay? So I ask the Lord and he reveals. And so the Lord, um, uh, you know, uh, reveals to me something. He says, just watch. So I'm watching. And the thing tightens and it's a golden thing. And then you know, the, the figure uh, that's being strangled is the figure of a dark, um, black, very black sculpture looking like thing. And then all of a sudden the head is knocked off. And the Lord says, I am slaying the demon.
out and destroying them. And I believe that was Leviathan who was being destroyed, who was being removed anyway, but it was demons and everything. It was the Lord who was fighting El Gibor. El Gibor. There are amazing things that God does with those who are willing. There are amazing things that God does. And let me tell you something. There's nothing special about any single individual. The difference is, are you willing? Are you willing? Are you saying, Lord, use me? Lord, minister to me. Lord, speak to me. Lord, I want to go deeper with you. Lord, take me deeper. There are higher heights. There are deeper seas. Lord, God, whatever it is you want to do, Lord, do it in me. God, I don't want to miss you. I don't want to miss you. And the word of God says, greater things that the Lord Jesus did shall we do. Oh, my God, my God, my God, where are these greater things? <gasps> You know, one of the mockers today um, posted something and said, Meantime, at Sozo Church of God, they are praying for votes to be multiplied and they are expecting a lot of likes, a lot of loves, and everything and all that. Who mocks God? Who mocks God? You know, I have seen God multiply grains. In Buret Nakuru, we went to feed the widows, and the grain we had wasn't enough, and we didn't have more money to buy. And we told the Lord, Lord, may nobody live hungry. And let me tell you, the sack remained at a quarter way, remaining a quarter way, and it fed so many women. He does it. He does it. So let the people mock, and it's fantastic. You know, remember that all on the edge of the Red Sea, they could have crossed. The Egyptians could have crossed. Yeah. So this is um, Exodus uh, 14. They could have crossed. But God said, oh, hang around. I have some time. What shall we do? All right. You know what? I want them to see my glory. So you know what? Just come there. Come there a little bit. And then this is what I'll do. Go and read Exodus 14. You know, we are so lazy. And then we come and talk and talk and talk. And we're used by the enemy to talk against the will of God. You know? And sometimes we just need to keep quiet. So I'm in the presence of God. And I'm praying and I see this first vision. The next vision I see is a vision of a coffin. And the coffin. So I'm trying to peep and see what coffin is this. God, what are you saying? And then the coffin just shuts. And then all of a sudden, I see... Um, uh, an angel of the Lord very clearly with a trumpet and he's blowing the trumpet he's blowing the trumpet now I knew this is the shofar and then the Lord said the great day of the Lord the great day of the Lord the great day of the Lord the glory of God is here but then, where is the great day of the Lord talked about? It's talked about in Joel chapter 2. Go and read Joel chapter 2. All of it. Go and read it. Kenya has followed that part of Joel chapter 2, by the way. Go and read it. And now we're in the place where the land is being refreshed and the Lord is pouring out his spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sorry, it's getting a little bit dark. I hope you can still see me. All right? Because I want to finish anyway um, before I move on uh, to, to praying and all that. Then, the next thing that I see... Um, you know what? Wait for it. Let me set up and then um, let me set up the light and then um, I will tell you the next thing that I saw. Don't go away. Get a cup of coffee or something. Get a cup of tea or something. Get some, some juice or something like that, you know, and then get comfortable. I'll be right back. And then when we're back, we'll take some time to also pray for people. Hallelujah. Shalom. Let me get some light on.